there's a sense where everything we do is based on thought, rational thought, thoughts that we work out in our brains and we make decisions. Even if we're not conscious of that thought, it is based on thought. As being based on thought, as, as humans whose entire existence is based on thought, we have the ability of thinking through everything in the world. Thinking through what we have for breakfast, thinking through whether or not the murder of an, a citizen by a police officer is just, thinking about whether or not we should steal a candy bar, thinking about how we love a child, thinking about the meaning of playing a video game. I'm going to share... Uh, some things with you, and then we'll talk about why this thinking is so powerful. This is a, a, a claim that's out there about Wikipedia, that if you go to any entry on Wikipedia, and then you click the first link, and then you just keep on clicking on the first link within each entry, you will always end up in the entry for a philosophy. So Grand Theft Auto leads to motor vehicle theft, which leads to crime, which leads to form of governments, which leads to state, which leads to polity, which leads to an entity, which leads to existence, which leads to ontology, which leads to philosophy. This is There's an argument here that the world is based on philosophy, that our entire existence is based on philosophy. Everything is philosophical. Our readings for this week, Michael Sandel's Why Some Americans Used Refuse to Wear a Mask, uh, Pickens on, on Vampires and Virtue, Getting Ethical with Buffy, which is the best TV show ever, uh, Crash Course Philosophy, Family Obligations, Short and Curly, It's the End of the World, Let's Go to Berserk, uh, Lewis, Represent, Representative John Lewis on Finding Moral Identity, and uh, Frost on the Ethics of Role-Playing Video Games. Each of these readings is applying philosophy or each of these talks, or each of these videos, it is applying philosophy to a particular element of our lives, of our current lives. I'm giving you a, an expansive readings this week so that you can think about how philosophy might be applied to different situations. And, and in particular, this is a particular kind of philosophy, situational ethics. Applying ethical thinking to different situations. It's wrong to steal a candy bar, unless perhaps the person who is charged uh, has the candy bar, has millions of them, and is charging ten dollars per candy bar. Maybe their actions are so unjust that it's ethical to steal a candy bar. It is wrong to um, to physically restrain a child, to be, to, to be almost physically violent with a child, unless perhaps that child is getting ready to run out in the street in front of a semi. It is wrong to tell a lie, unless telling the lie is a worse damage than, or, uh, unless telling a lie keeps you from a greater damage, say, destroying someone's self-esteem when you tell them that their hair looks horrible. Situational ethics allows us to take whatever ethical framework we work in, and we've been thinking about those in the past few weeks, and apply it to different situations to decide what is the best course of action. That is an act, act, active philosophy. That is making philosophy active. It allows us to take our ways of thinking and apply it in the, worlds, in the world. All of this is a way of leading us to our project. This is your second project for the philosophy course. Your first couple of projects are coming back to you very soon. I, I promise upon the soul of my mother, your first projects are coming back very soon. Um, the, your second project. This is your last opportunity in this class outside of the final exam to allow me to know that you are doing this reading and you are thinking about it. And I've got to say, some of your your uh, discussion board posts don't show that. Your reading notes for about half the class show it, half the class not so much. This is your last opportunity to take something on your own and make it meaningful. So here's your project. 
you need to create a philosophical argument about a specific topic of interest, and your argument will employ a specific philosophical approach. Your argument must be presented in a language based in a language based text of some sort that shows the amount of thought, work, and effort you would need to put into a five page term paper. You could, of course, just write a five page term paper, but I want to leave this assignment open to you and your own intellectual and creative tendencies. So I'm expecting you to do some amount of work here. I want you to do academic work that shows me your thinking, and I want you to use language to do it. I just don't, you can't just turn in a video of interpretive dance. You can certainly turn in a video of interpretive dance, but you also need some writing to go along with that to show me that you're thinking. Because you may, your interpretive dance may be the most brilliant interpretation of philosophy ever, but if I don't understand it, because I don't know anything about dance, because I do this kind of dance, I, if I can't understand your philosophy, then it's not working. I need language here to help me do that. Your project must meet the following requirements. It must establish and prove an argument within one specific area of philosophy we have studied. Education, the nature of being, consciousness of self, gods and belief, awareness of others, governance, ethics, justice, or whatever else we talk about in the final weeks. It must use at least two of the texts we have read for class as building blocks, support, or counterpoints to the argument. Use here means that you provide details from the text that are related to your argument. It does not mean passing general references. You can't say, Aristotle said, Bleh, and then just never talk about them. I don't want a broad reference. I want you to, to see that you're using the text. It must show that you've learned something from this class. It must be developed as, at a sophisticated level, showing the thought and effort required in college coursework. The work in your text must be equivalent to the work one would put into a five-page term paper for a college class, and it's on me to assess that. That's my job. I get to look at your work and say, did you really put in an adequate amount of effort here? Now, it may be that you think you did, but it turns out you didn't. We may have a disagreement about that, but ultimately, it is my decision on whether or not you've done an adequate enough amount of work. And it must use proper citation and be created with academic integrity. That means don't go steal stuff, don't, don't uh, take other people's ideas, don't include stuff that you don't cite. You must cite things. And if you, if you have confusions about citation, we can talk about that. Some suggestions. You can and probably should focus your, your attention on a particular er topic within the area you choose. Sorry, my words weren't working there. This semester, we've looked at many topics, such as why do we study, how do we know our minds, justifying gods, voting, eating meat, etc. Narrow your stuff down. Don't just take all of epistemology. Don't just take all of Descartes or all of Buber or all of uh, Thomas Hobbes, but narrow it down and look at something specific. What if you were to apply Thomas Hobbes' Leviathan to... Uh, student council in a high school. It might be really interesting to analyze governance in a student high school. Uh, in, a, in a high school. The point here is that you look at something specific, like we are this week, and apply philosophy. Number two, start with you. What have you learned? What do you care about? How have your ideas, your thinking, your arguments changed this semester? What caused the change? And, and there, I'm actually, you know, we're talking about um, specifically what caused the change in your thinking from this class. You may have had other experiences. You may have gotten sick with COVID. You may have worked too much. You may have broken up with somebody. That changes your thinking as well. But I'm, I'm interested, of course, in philosophy. Go through your readings journal. What caught your attention? What concerned you? What does your show, journal show that you cared about? Review the textbook, rewatch a video, re review your exam, find ideas in your course material, go back and look at old lectures, go back through our discussions. What did you get right and what did you get wrong? Think about a social matter, matter that mat, so, sorry, a social issue that matters to you and then apply philosophy to it. Here's a really strong recommendation. Avoid the internet. I mean, don't avoid it because we can't avoid it. But don't go there as a source for your thinking. 
You can use it to find text or evidence, but don't go look up philosophy project to find ideas. That, that's the road to plagiarism. If you decide you want to write about uh, the Avengers movie and you want to use philosophy and you go look it up on the internet, you're going to find lots of stuff out there doing philosophy and the Avengers. And if you go and take those ideas and try to form them as your own, that's plagiarism. And then um, the last thing is start now. Don't wait. you got a few weeks. We're going to be workshopping ideas next week. Um, and then we're going to workshop drafts in week 15. So you need to get jumping on this. It's the project's due on the last day of class on uh, May 7th. You may be wondering, okay, what, what can I possibly do? I want to show you something. This is the Blackwell Philosophy and Pop Culture series. Um, and uh, the Buffy article we have wasn't come from the didn't come from this, but this is the same idea. What this what this series does is it takes just about anything you can think of in philosophy, and it gathers together a whole bunch of uh, essays by a whole bunch of academics doing philosophy and um, the pop culture. And in fact, I've got one of my copies right here. This is my Buffy one. Buffy, Buffy, The Vampire Slayer and Philosophy, Fear and Trembling in Sunnydale. It's a really awesome book. I enjoy it a lot because I enjoy Buffy a lot. And I've also got one on uh, poker. I've got one. Oh, here's the one on poker. Poker and Philosophy. There's a lot of really cool books out there. And we can look through this list. Um, 30 Rock and Philosophy, Batman and Philosophy, Family Guy and Philosophy, uh, Iron, Maiden and Iron Man and Philosophy, the Terminator and philosophy, The Walking Dead and philosophy. Most of these are TV shows, but there there are a lot more like Legos and philosophy, or um, just about anything you can think of. And this isn't the only series out there like this. And the reason why I'm pointing these out to you is because what this shows you is that you can do anything you love, anything you focus on, and you can apply philosophy to it. That's the whole point of philosophy, is for us to see how logical thinking and rational argument and really good support allows us to find the meaning of the things that we do. It, it's particularly obvious in ethics, right, where you take particular situations and you work out meanings. But it, it applies for everything. Why do we love watching TV? What's the philosophy behind that? Why do we care so much for children? What's the philosophy behind that? Why is it impossible for us to walk outside and smell a flower and not feel just a little bit better? What's the philosophy behind that? You've, we've been doing a lot of reading this semester, a lot of talking, a lot of writing, a lot of um, reflection on our own lives and the ideas of others. Now is the time for you to find something you care about and make it meaningful. Go apply your ideas to something that matters to you. Don't just pick a big topic because it's a big topic. Who cares about abortion? Who cares about, um, about uh, pro, uh, police violence? Who cares about uh, whether or not Donald Trump was an, a criminal? I mean, of course, we all care about those things, but maybe there's something that is much more specific to your values, your life, and your meanings. Find that and apply our philosophy. I hope you know by now that I'm a pretty wide open uh, professor and, and I'm a pretty open professor. And while we haven't been able to build relationships in this class in the way that I would like to, we haven't been able to talk one-on-one -on -one in the way I want to. Our, our philosophy cafe has never really taken off except for one or two students. I hope that it's come across that I want you to learn and I want you to be engaged. But um, uh, what really matters to me is that you do that by showing that you can do the academic work. I'm not going to grade these philosophy projects very, very difficult with, with a whole lot of very intense pressure on doing everything right. I am going to grade these pro philosophy projects on your engagement with the project and with the ideas of the class.
make sure that, that you got that. And you're going to get your first projects back very soon to help you think about how I'm going to be engaging with the projects. As always, you can let me know if you got any questions. Send me an email. Send me an instant message. I'm happy to meet with you. I don't think I've met with anybody from our philosophy course except for the couple people that come to Philosophy Cafe. And I'm happy to meet with you in these final weeks to talk about the project, the class, the readings, or your future in philosophy, your future at Henry Ford College. I'm happy to talk with you. Send me an email if you want to talk. Send me an instant message. And... Um, Start thinking. Get something good done. We'll talk to you soon. Take care.